We shall continue our discussion on MOS logic circuits. Last class we had introduced the depletion mode MOSFET which is a device where uh, a channel already exists and in channel uh, is there in a depletion mode MOSFET so that the between the source and drain okay uh, there is going to be conduction uh, when uh, drain voltage is applied even when the gate voltage is 0. All right. Now, so this is a normally on transistor. Okay. The other transistor where the channel does not exist is called an enhancement mode device where it is a, no a normally off device. When the gate voltage is 0, the current is 0. This type of transistor is also called a buried channel MOSFET okay, because of the existing already existing channel BC MOSFET sometimes. Okay. So this uh, as we had already discussed that this for this particular device the characteristic equations okay that is for the current voltage characteristics is same uh, one can have use the same equations as for an enhancement mode device but the only thing to be noted here is that instead of a threshold voltage for an enhancement mode device here what you have is a pinch off voltage VP okay for a threshold voltage for an enhancement mode device okay all right and this is uh, for an enhancement e mosfet okay and this is a pinch off voltage okay for a depletion mosfet okay <coughs> and uh, so when the gate voltage is less than minus VP, all right. So suppose VP is three volts. When the gate voltage is less than minus three volts, there is going to be no conduction. Okay. And when the gate voltage is uh, less negative compared to VP, okay, there is going to be conduction. Okay. So from minus three volt onwards, there is going to be conduction. So if you just look at the IV characteristics, the current voltage characteristics, okay, ID VDS, okay for a MOSFET okay and suppose you are, if this is the characteristic for an enhancement type MOSFET enhancement mode MOSFET all right so if for the enhancement mode MOSFET VT is equal to 1 volt say okay this could be 2 volts gate voltage 3 volts 4 volts 5 volts 6 volts say all right Okay, whereas if uh, it is the characteristic of a depletion mode MOSFET, okay, where VP is three volts, okay, so if it is VP is equal to three volts, say this is a depletion mode MOSFET characteristic, then this characteristic could might well be minus two volts. This one for minus one volt. This is all all gate voltages I'm writing. Okay, this one for zero volts. This is for plus 1 volt say this plus 2 volts okay. So the nature of the characteristics is the same okay except that you have conduction in a depletion mode MOSFET even for negative gate voltages all right and even at 0 gate voltage okay there is conduction whereas for an enhancement mode device okay it you require to have the gate voltage greater than the positive threshold voltage. All right. The nature of the characteristic remains the same. All right. Is it clear? So uh, now, all right. So we come back to the inverter 
uh, configuration. So uh, here what we are going to do is we are going to use the depletion mode device as the load transistor. Okay, we have already seen uh, a resistance as a load, an enhancement mode um, transistor in the saturated condition, okay, the saturated load by shorting the gate and the drain and also uh, enhancement mode device in the linear region characteristics okay, where you apply a gate voltage, constant gate voltage greater than VDD plus VT. Okay, it is always in the linear region. So this is the next alternative okay, where you have a depletion mode MOSFET okay, acting as the load transistor. So, all right, so the structure of this is something like this. All right, so this is a depletion mode MOSFET. The symbol is something like this. We put an additional line here, okay, which signifies it is a depletion mode MOSFET, all right, okay. And for this MOSFET, the gate and the source is shorted, okay, for the load transistor. So here it is V in and here you have V out, all right. So this gate and source is shorted. Okay, now we shall again try to do uh, what we have been doing graphically, that is obtain the input output characteristics. Okay, that is graphically we shall try to obtain the input output characteristics. So here we come back again to the characteristics, all right. So now we have to draw the load line. Okay, now what is going to be the load line? So suppose this is the characteristics of the driver transistor, okay, that is the N channel enhancement mode transistor, okay, that is the driver transistor. Then you have to draw the characteristic of the load device, okay, uh, for as the load line, okay. As usual, we have to draw it taking VDD as the origin, okay, and doing it uh, on the uh, taking the negative of the axis, okay, just inverting the uh, characteristics, okay. So for this particular uh, load device, gate to source voltage is always 0, okay, gate to source voltage is always 0, the gate and source is, source is shorted. So we have to pick up the characteristic of the load device for VGS is equal to 0. So see for VGS is equal to 0, the characteristic is something like this, okay. So the load characteristics, okay, is going to be load line as you call it is going to be something like this, okay. That, that is the characteristics for VGS is equal to 0, something like this, okay. All right. So of course, this is uh, an ideal characteristics, but usually uh, it is not so flat, okay. It may be slightly like this, you know, okay. Uh, slightly increase in current is there, okay, due to some various reasons. One of the reasons is, of course, uh, the channel length modulation in saturation. The other reason which uh, we have not yet discussed is that the, in the MOSFET, okay, actually the, it is a four terminal device, although we have always drawn three terminals. One is the bulk contact, okay, usually, okay, that bulk contact is put to ground. Okay, and if you put the bulk contract to ground, okay, and in normal MOSFET as such here, as you see, the source is also grounded. Okay, so uh, there is no potential between the source and the uh, bulk. Okay, but here, since the source voltage itself is going to rise, okay, as the voltage changes, okay, this, there is a bulk to source potential. Okay which actually changes the threshold voltage of the MOSFET. This is called body effect, okay. The threshold voltage of the MOSFET is not a constant as such or the pinch off voltage in this case, but actually it becomes a function of the output voltage, okay. Because of that, it is, uh, it is not actually very flat, okay. But it is, there is a slight increase in current, okay. There is some increase in current as we increase the, as the drain to source voltage of the as the output voltage, uh, you can say, of this inverter changes, all right. So anyway, let us look at this characteristics. 
okay. Now, if you want to find out the input output characteristics of this inverter V in V out all right what do you see as the when the input voltage is 0 okay when the input voltage is 0 okay what is the condition of this transistor this transistor is cut off okay it is off basically okay when this transistor is off the output voltage is going to go to V output again if you look at this uh, graph uh, this uh, output characteristics okay when the input voltage is 0 the point of intersection between the characteristics and the load line is at V is, uh, is equal to VDD okay at VDD. So the output voltage is going to be at VDD. So this is uh, output voltage is going to remain at VDD till V in is equal to VT okay and then what happens. So this is Vt all right and then what happens as you go on increasing the input voltage the output voltage is going to fall okay but you see um, the fall is not very sharp okay there is a small change in output voltage if you go on increasing the input voltage okay. So it is no, it's more or less like this very small drop in the output voltage and then suddenly say for example when the input voltage is slightly less than 4 volts in this graph as you see it here okay it the output voltage is very close to VDD and then when it goes just above 4 volts you see if you take the other characteristics just above 4 volts the output voltage has fallen all the way from uh, 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 very close to VDD to very close to 0. Okay, so the gain is very high all right. So you see there is a sharp fall it almost falls like this very steeply and then of course if you go on increasing the gate voltage it remains very close to 0. So this may be 5 volts all right. So this is the nature of the characteristics output characteristics okay. So the important thing to note here is that if we uh, recall our uh, discussion last class okay we had said that for a very high gain okay we want what we want the load resistance to be very high RL to be must be very high. So RL very high means the uh, load line should be uh, almost parallel to the X axis okay then only you get a uh, very high gain okay all right. So at the same time for GM to be high okay the characteristics okay the current it should be operating at a higher current. So what you have now is a, is a more ideal load line in the sense that the not only you have a region of very high effective load resistance okay because this is almost flat load line and also this is elevated okay if you just take a resistance and you have a, such a high F resistance no it will be something like this close to the x axis but you have a elevated uh, um, this uh, this region of very high load resistance if, okay is actually um, at a much higher current so that you get the effect of high gm okay transconductance all right so this is a more ideal type of uh, load capacity uh, load okay compared to the other categories okay with the result you have a very high gain region okay and in fact we can see that we shall also be able to see that you can adjust this region of the characteristics okay where you want this region of high gain okay by choosing the uh, transconductance parameters of the individual devices okay properly all right. So this is about the input output characteristics all right of the depletion mode load transistor okay. So okay so basically again if you look at, uh, if you just go back to this characteristics okay you have a region okay 
from here to here when the input voltage is increasing all right you have a region here up to here okay let me call this VA say output voltage is VA okay when the depletion mode load transistor is in the linear region of operation okay and the driver transistor is in saturation. Then you have a region when both the transistors are in saturation and it is in this region. So initially say the driver transistor is off up to here okay in this region all right the load transistor is in the linear region the driver transistor is in the saturation okay. So this output voltage corresponds to VA on that curve okay all right this is VA and then both the transistors in saturation which corresponds to the very steep region of this characteristics all right and again say suppose sometime here somewhere here you know may, may call it VB okay what happens is the driver transistor goes to the linear region and the load transistor is in the saturation region it may be somewhere here okay all right so you have the VA VB okay all right so in fact I have drawn so many curves I will just remove I will just retain one of them okay so okay all right. So let us just look at um, make a very simple analysis and see so what is this value of V in okay when both the transistors are in saturation okay when both the transistors are in saturation this value okay how do you find that out okay. So basically in that region of operation uh, we have to equate the, this current of uh, the saturation uh, the current of the driver transistor with that of the drive uh, sorry current of the load transistor with that of the current flowing in the driver transistor okay. Now if you look at the expressions all right the load transistor current IL so you know the expression for the uh, saturation voltage so what it what is it k by 2 into vgs minus vt whole squared okay so it is kl by 2 vgs minus vt okay for the load transistor vgs is always 0 so vgs minus vt is equal to vp vgs minus vt squared is vp squared okay so kl vp squared all right and for the driver transistor okay you have kd by 2 v in minus vt whole squared all right so you just equate that what do you get you will get v in minus vt is equal to uh, one by root k d by k l to v p okay and or v in is equal to v t plus v p by square root of what is known as the beta ratio all right where beta r is equal to k d by k l okay. So V in is equal to V t plus V p by root beta r okay by where beta r is k d by k l. So that is the value of V in okay at which you have the steep region of the characteristics. Now what about V a and V b? V a is a is equal to what is VA? VA is the voltage at which the load device goes to uh, goes to saturation okay that is for the load device okay uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, VG 
V d s is equal to V g s minus V t ok. That is the point at which a device goes from the linear region to the saturation region all right V d s is equal to V g s minus V t. So, uh, what, what is it actually? So, the V output is equal to V a at that time ok all right. So, ok uh, I think we should write it like this. So, at V output is equal to V a ok load device goes to saturation ok. So, for the load device V d s is equal to V g s minus V t. What is the drain to source voltage of the load device? V d d minus V a ok and the V g s is always 0. So, and V t is actually minus V p ok. So, V a is equal to V d d minus V p all right ok. Also, so this is uh, equal to V a we have already found that the other uh, uh, voltage is V b which we will have to find out V b is the voltage if you go back to this characteristics V b is the voltage at which the driver e transistor goes to saturation all right ok. Driver transistor so at V out is equal to V b ok the driver transistor is going to saturation. So, for the driver transistor V g s is equal uh, V d s is equal to V g s minus V t ok. What is V d s for the driver transistor? V b all right that is the drain to source voltage V b is equal to V g s is V in minus V t ok. What is V in at that point? At V b? At this point V in is the same as the V in at which both the transistors are in saturation. It is the same V in here ok and which we have already found out to be equal to V t plus V p by root beta r ok. So, this one is V t plus V p by root beta r minus V t. So, this is V p by root beta r ok. All right. So, we have found out the critical points in this curve actually. So, this is this is V t here this is V t plus V p by root beta r ok. This V b is equal to V p by root beta r ok and this V a is equal to V d d minus V p all right. So, basically if you look at this this uh, this is V t, uh, v t this is V p by root beta r ok and this is also V p by root beta r. So, basically from V t if you draw a line with unity slope ok the point where it cuts here that is the point all right. This much is V t uh, V p by root beta r this much is also V p by root beta r ok. So, that is the point here it is V, v d d minus V p all right. So, if you want to say that basically the idea is that if you are suppose you are operating from a 5 volt power supply ok it is advantageous to have the logic threshold ok at uh, V d d by 2 logic threshold I hope you remember that is if you draw take a unity slope line here ok the point where it intersects the curve that is the logic threshold that is the unity slope means V in is equal to V out ok that is the logic threshold that is if the input voltage is greater than logic threshold output will be less than logic threshold uh, and vice versa ok that is how you define logic threshold ok. So, it is advantageous to have uh, logic threshold somewhere at the center of the logic swing ok. So, it, it is advantageous to have it at V d d by 2. So, this value if you go back here V in is equal to V t plus V p by root beta r ok this should be about V d d by 2 all right. So, usually what is done is ok V t 
is taken as uh, 0.2 VDD that is the usual d designs okay and VP is taken as 0.6 VDD and beta R say is taken as 4 okay then you have say 0.2 VDD plus this is 0.6 divided by root of 4 is 2 so 0.3 so V in will be equal to VDD by 2 okay. So these are the values one can actually take okay in which case all right this of course this is going to be at 2 volts okay it does not all right this is VDD minus VP VP is 3 volts actually so this is this point VA is going to be 2 volts VB is equal going to be equal to 1.5 volts okay all right so the reason see you can in fact take a number of combinations to get VDD by 2 all right here beta R is taken as 4 okay you can have uh, beta R at a higher value okay in which case the region of uh, this unity uh, this large gain region in the characteristics that portion can be increased okay but you see what is beta r beta r is equal to kd by kl all right now if kd by kl beta r is equal to kd by kl and you, you know that we have already said that kd by kl you are just by uh, controlling the the W by L ratios of the transistor. So you have W D by L D say and uh, W L by L L okay that is for the two transistors okay. So if it is 4 what do you usually do it can be shown okay that the total area which one actually requires for the device area is equal to W D into L D plus W L into L L. So you must also try to minimize the area okay it can be shown you can do a simple analysis to show that in order to minimize this okay what one has to do is make this WD by LD that is equal to 2 and WL by LL is equal to half okay in that particular combination okay you will have the area to be minimum. okay that is if you have beta r is equal to 16 say all right this beta r if it is 16 okay then if uh, kd is 4 and kl is 1 fourth okay then it gives minimum area all right you, you could have had kd 8 and kl 2 uh, and kl half okay that would also be 16 give you 16 but that requires much larger area okay so if if you have uh, uh, so if you have beta r as 4 okay 2 and half will give the minimum area so basically what you have is wd by ld so if uh, x is the minimum dimension in the device in the, in your technology okay you would have ld is equal to x okay wd is equal to twice x okay and here okay you want this to be half so wl will be x and ll will be twice x okay so if you make beta r is equal to 16 okay what is going to happen this would remain x but this would become 4x okay wd and ll will become 4x then it will give you 16 okay so you require more area it is taking up more area so there is a trade off okay as you can see that if you uh, uh, if you want this characteristics to be like this you know this this large gain region to be uh, to, uh, uh, to have a um, uh, to be there for most of the output transition okay the transition from high to low okay then you would have to have a larger beta r okay and that would take up 
um, in fact if you have a larger beta r it goes all the way like this you know so uh, but that would require more area so there is a trade off okay so we have seen the uh, inverter charact uh, characteristics for a depletion mode load and obviously this characteristics is much better than the other ones earlier ones which we have discussed in the sense that if you compare okay for example with a saturated load okay it is better because it goes all the way the output is going to go all the way to vdd which is not true in the case of saturated load all right because it the characteristics okay the the load transistor is always conducting okay it does not cut off okay uh, if you can uh, compare with the um, the linear mode load okay it is al also better because you require just one uh, power supply you don't require two power supplies okay also the output characteristics okay the nature of the characteristics is much better okay and there is a sharp transition from high to low the gain is much better because the characteristics okay is the flat region of the characteristics here okay the effective load resistance is very high okay and you have a very high gain okay which is much better also than the uh, all the other characteristics okay because on the other characteristics the load line was something like this you know that was the resistance for the other one it was it used to be something like this or like this okay so this is much better okay so this is the an in, uh, inverter with the depletion mode load as we said that this configuration was very popular for a long period of time okay and lot of uh, early mi microprocessors were fabricated using this technology okay like the 8085 so this is an inverter uh, just uh, uh, to uh, say how how to make other logic gates okay that is if you want to make a nor gate out of this okay how do you do it you ha must have two nmos transistors in parallel so you can have so this is the load transistor so you have this is a nor gate all right a b so this output will be the nor function of a and b okay if you have to have a nan gate it is going to be something like this a b okay i just explain a little bit okay uh when any input is high in this case in the nor configuration the lower transistor is on okay so if the lower uh, transistor is on okay uh, is uh, then what happens is the the conductivity basically you can look at it this way that you have the upper transistor okay basically the model which is used to understand this is looking at them as resistors okay the transistors okay so you have a resistance here okay all right and you have two resistances like this in the nor case this is vdd okay this is the load device this is the these are the uh, driver two driver transistors now if you uh, make one of these if you apply uh, uh, if the input voltage to one of these driver transistors is high basically what it means that this resistance is going to become low okay and if you have a load if, if this resistance becomes much lower than the load resistance okay the output voltage will be pulled towards ground okay if this both these devices are off that means they are very high resistances so the output voltage is going to be high okay towards vdd so if you look at this structure here so when any input goes high the corresponding resistance of the transistor is going to be low which means that 
the output, if you just consider them as a, as a potential divider network, the output is going to be low. Okay? If both the transistors are off, the output is high. So the, basically this acts as a NOR gate. All right. Similarly, if you look at this structure, okay, you have the equivalent resistive network is going to be something like this. So this is VDD. This is the resistance of the load. Okay, RL you can say this is RD1 and RD2. Okay. So the output is going to be low if see these are this the both uh, they are in series. So the output can be low only when both the transistor both RD1 and RD2 is low. Okay. That is when both the transistors are on, okay, then only the output can go low. That is when both the inputs are high, then only the output goes low. Otherwise, if one is on and the other is off, okay, the effective uh, resistance, uh, okay, the effective resistance of the driver part, okay, or the lower part of the network, that is going to be high compared to RL. Okay, and the output is going to be high. Okay. So this is a NAND configuration, all right. whereas the previous configuration when the two driver transistors are in parallel is a NOR configuration. Okay. In fact, you can have other types of circuits also. So I mean in fact, you know, uh, different logic circuits. For example, here, you know, if you put another transistor like this and call this input C, Okay, so what is the logic you get? A, B, or C. I mean, A, B, or C invert. Okay, so uh, this is can be explained by a, a similar uh, resistive network. All right. Okay. Well, so this is the depletion mode load, but this uh, configuration also has its problems. Okay. In fact, one can think of improvements of this. The problem one can uh, one sees is that this load device is always on. Okay. So what is the problem if the load device is always on? Yeah. So there is always, for example, if the input, the driver transistor is on. Okay. You have a, a, a static power dissipation. That is, this is always conducting. All right. This is always conducting. So, if the input is high, okay, there is a current flowing, okay, which, if it could be avoided, of course, it is better. Okay. The other disadvantage is when you are switching. Say, if you if you think of a capacitive load here, okay, and you are, uh, if you apply a, uh, say, a low to high pulse here, the output should go from high to low. Okay. How does it go from high to low? This transistor is turning on, <coughs> so there is going to be a current flowing here which discharges the capacitance. But since this load device is also on, okay, there will also be a load current here, All right, IL. So the current which is actually uh, used to uh, is discharging this capacitance is equal to ID minus IL. If this is the current of the driver transistor ID. So the current which is actually discharging is ID minus IL. Okay, and this load current is actually slowing down the process because uh, the current which is discharging the capacitance is reduced. All right. So this is a problem. So if you could have a situation when you know uh, the low transistor also switches off completely, that would be better. So that led to the CMOS concept or complementary MOSFET. Okay, but uh, okay, where you have a P-channel MOSFET as the load. All right. So the configuration is like this. 
this is the n channel device, this is a p channel device as I said the symbol which I will be using, there are many symbols in textbooks okay, I will be using is like this, the most simplest, this is the simplest symbol one can think of actually, just a bubble here okay, it signifies the p MOS okay and you sh the two inputs or the two gates are shorted, so this is the input here and here you have the output okay. First what is a PMOS? The PMOS is uh, uh, again a, a MOSFET where the source and drain regions are made of P plus material, the substrate is N type. So this is also an enhancement mode device, okay. So it, 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 is, it is exactly like an NMOS, only thing is that the P regions are replaced with N regions and the N regions with P regions, all right. And since uh, the charges, okay, the nature of charges, you know, the sign of the charges have been changed, okay, the voltages required to operate this device are just the opposite, okay. That is, the, wherever you have applied a positive voltage, here you have to apply a negative voltage, okay. That is, uh, in order to create the channel, you must have holes in the channel rather than electrons. So you must apply a negative gate to source voltage, okay. Then when the gate voltage becomes negative, then only you can induce positive charges in the channel, okay. Again, the, when uh, you apply a positive charges, it, firstly the uh, electrons are repelled from the surface creating a depletion layer and if the negative charges becomes more, uh, higher, okay, the, if you apply a higher negative gate voltage, you attract holes to the surface, okay, creating the channel. So again, we can use similar relations as we have used for the N channel enhancement mode MOSFET, only the signs of all the voltages are different. Say here, okay, this is the source and this is the drain, this is the gate, okay, the drain voltage should be negative with respect to the source because the source of holes is here, okay. Source, the holes flow from the source to the drain, okay. So for the holes to flow, the drain voltage has to be negative, okay. The drain to source voltage is negative, all right. Whereas in a N channel MOSFET, the drain to source voltage is positive. In fact, see uh, the MOSFET as such, the device is symmetric, okay. The source and drain is symmetry. It is just uh, so which terminal would you call as the source and which terminal would you call a drain? In a p-channel MOSFET, okay, see the source is the source of charges and the drain is where the charges flow to, okay. So in a p-channel MOSFET, it is the holes which are flowing. So the charge, the terminal which is more negative is the drain, okay, and the terminal which is more positive is the source, okay, in a p-channel MOSFET. In a N channel MOSFET, okay, the terminal which is more positive is the drain and the terminal which is the more negative is the source because uh, the electrons will flow uh, from uh, a lower potential to a higher potential, okay. So it, it is going to flow to the drain when the drain is more uh, positive with respect to the source, okay. So that is how the convention for source and drain. For example, if you look at this circuit here. This is the N channel MOSFET, so this is obviously the source, okay, and this is the drain because this terminal is more positive with respect to this because this is ground which is the lowest potential in the circuit, okay, and so the drain is obviously going to be at a higher potential. So here, in the, if you look at the P channel MOSFET, okay, this is the, the highest potential in the circuit. So this obviously becomes the source of the P channel MOSFET, okay, and this is the drain because here the drain potential is going to be always less than the source, okay. So you have the P channel MOSFET and the N channel MOSFET, okay. Now what happens? Let us see. If you look at the extreme cases, say let us say the threshold voltage of this N channel device, we call it VTN now, okay, is say 1 volt, okay, and VTP, okay again we put a mod modulus sign okay because it is negative as 1 volt modulus of vtp is 1 volt okay 
So what happens? Now, if V in is say 0 volts, what happens? This device, n channel device, the gate to source voltage is less than the threshold voltage. So the n channel device is off. For the p channel device, the gate to source voltage is equal to minus VDD. The source is at plus VDD, the gate voltage is at 0. So the gate to source voltage is at, is at minus VDD and if VDD is say 5 volts, so the gate to source voltage is minus 5 volts. So which obviously means that this p channel device is going to conduct because the gate to source voltage is more negative than the threshold voltage. Okay? It has to be more negative to conduct p channel MOSFET. Okay? So this is conducting fully where this is off. So what is going to be the output voltage? Again if you look, think of it as the resistances, okay, the upper resistance is low, the lower resistance is very high. So the output voltage is going to be high. So when the input voltage is 0 volts, output voltage should be 5 volts. Okay? And one of the transistors is off. So basically it means that there is not going to be any current flowing as such in the steady state because in this branch, in this uh, circuit, okay, from uh, the supply to the ground, okay, this transistor is off. All right, there is no path for current to flow. Then if V in becomes equal to 5 volts say or equal to VDD, okay, the n channel device is on because 5 volts is greater than 1 volt. Okay, this n channel device VD, uh, VGS is greater than VT, so current flows. What about the p channel device? Off, Off because this is uh, 5 volt 5, so it is 0 volts. Okay, and you require the gate to source voltage to be more negative than the threshold voltage for the conduction to take place for the p channel, but it is just 0 volts, so that is off. So the lower transistor is on, the upper transistor is off. So what is the output voltage? The output voltage is low. Okay? So this behaves as an inverter. And you see in both the cases which we have discussed, one of the transistor is off. Okay? So there is no power uh, consumption as such because there is no current flowing. Okay, it's just like one of the one of the transistors behave as open circuit, a very high resistance. Okay, so there is the zero static power dissipation in one of the in both the steady states. Okay, so that is what makes uh, the MOS CMOS so I, uh, such an ideal inverter. Okay, uh, this particular circuit CMOS inverter circuit behave as an ideal inverter. Okay, so in fact, all right. Uh, if you look at the input output characteristics, so this way it will go up to if input is less than VTN, okay. So this is output, this is input, okay. So this is up to VTN, the output will be VDD, which we have already seen, then the output falls, okay. And here, when the input is equal to VDD minus VTP, okay, the output will be equal to 0 volts. Okay. That is when this uh, output transistor is no longer, uh, I mean the output transistor is, uh, that is when input goes above VDD minus VTP, okay, the gate to source of the P channel device becomes less negative compared to the negative threshold voltage, so it cut, cuts off. Okay? So the output voltage goes to 0. Okay? So this is a, a more ideal okay, inverter characteristics. All right? so, uh, so in fact, the CMOS is the most, uh, is uh, a very popular logic circuit nowadays and you well know that in fact, most, uh, if you consider in terms of volume, okay, maybe about uh, uh, um, 80 to 90 percent of all the logic circuits fabricated today would be CMOS. Okay? So uh, the, the major reasons for that being so popular is the extremely low power dissipation. All right? And uh, 
uh, which makes it ideal for very large scale integration. Okay. The problem initially was that from the technology point of view, it was difficult to fabricate N channel MOSFETs and P channel MOSFETs on the same wafer because the requirement of the wafer was different. Okay. But once this has been sorted out, okay, um, uh, this has become very popular. Okay. And uh, so we shall, in the next class, we shall uh, discuss um, uh, the circuit in more detail. Okay, and think of other logic circuits and further extensions of the basic inverter circuit.